Yeast are single cell fungi. The baker's yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae is a simple eukaryotic organism. It is one of the most useful microorganisms known to humans. For thousands of years, it has served the mankind for making bread, beer, or wine. By the process of fermentation, yeast cells convert simple sugars into carbon dioxide and alcohol. Fermentation turns fruit sugars into wine and grain mashed into beer or whiskey. The carbon dioxide produced by fermentation causes bread to rise. Yeast is a very popular experimental system. Because it is evolutionary related to humans, yeast provides an ideal model system for understanding the biology of higher organisms. Yeast cells can exist stably either as haploids or as diploids. Both forms can reproduce asexually by budding, the most common mode of vegetative growth in yeasts. A small bud, or a daughter cell, is formed on the surface of the mother cell. The bud grows nearly to the size of the parent cell. The nucleus divides, and the two cells separate. The cycle then begins again for both cells. Besides the asexual life cycle, yeast has a sexual life cycle as well. Haploid cells occur in two different mating types, type A or type alpha, analogs to male and female. If two cells of opposite mating types meet, they fuse and form a alpha diploid cell. Upon starvation, the diploids undergo meiosis. The cells divide and form a small sac that contains four spores, two a and two alpha spores. This structure is known as tetrad. Once the growth conditions improve, the four spores germinate and grow vegetatively as haploid cells. In the lab, the haploid spore products can be individually isolated and analyzed. The ability to separate and grow all four meiotic products makes genetic analysis with yeast particularly simple. The selected diploids are transferred to a sporulation plate with low contents of nutrients. After 7 to 10 days, the diploids sporulate. Now we can transfer one single colony by using a sterile inoculation loop. The cell material is diluted. To optimize the dispersion, the tube is shaken by a vortex machine. With the help of a new inoculation loop, we take out some diluted cell material and streak it out on a fresh agar plate in the standardized method. In the lab, we use the sexual life cycle of yeast to produce strains, carrying new combinations of mutated genes. We can mate two strains, each having a mutation or a deletion of a single gene. After sporulation, the four haploid spores of the tetrad are separated. This can be done manually with a special dissection microscope. After sporulation, the tetrads are plated onto agar dishes. Each tetrad is approached individually and dissected with the help of a fine needle tip. The single spores are transferred to new positions, where they grow as individual colonies. This procedure is reliable, however time-consuming. Sometimes we need to cross hundreds or thousands of yeast strains, or we want to test many strains under different conditions. In the lab, we use a special robotic system which duplicates tens of thousands of yeast colonies in one step. First, we choose the program Replicate Many. For preparation, the robotic system needs the source plate with yeast colonies. 
and some fresh target plates for duplication. When the software program starts, the robot will ask for a source plate first, which we then put into the left hand drawer. Second, the target plates need to be placed on the rotating electric wheel. Only two target plates may be placed on the wheel at a time. Finally, we have to add disposable plastic pads of pins before the robot can start working. The cells are then collected on the pin pads. The robotic arm positions pin pads over the source plate, picks up the colonies, and prints them on a fresh target plate in the same arrangement. With the help of the robot, we can rapidly pin thousands of yeast colonies onto multiple plates with different growth conditions. In the so-called synthetic genetic array analysis, we examine if the combination of two mutations or gene deletions will lead to cell death or growth inhibition. For this screen, we first need to produce double mutants. The mutant strain on plate A with our gene of interest is crossed with all colonies on plate B, where each colony corresponds to a different deletion strain. For this, the colonies from plate A are pinned and then transferred onto a fresh target plate in the left-hand drawer. Then the robot drops the used plate into the trash. Next, the robot arm positions itself over the source plate B and pins their colonies as well. For the final mating, the robot arm moves to the target plate again and combines the colonies from plate B with those from plate A. After overnight growth, the mated colonies are transferred to a selection plate, which allows only mated cells to survive. Finally, we produced an ordered array of double mutants, and we can assay them for defects in growth and cell survival. Thus, we can identify important genetic interactions which lead to cell death or growth inhibition when disrupted.